Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, hopefully having an amazing day. I'm going to kick this video off discussing RDNA 3, specifically the release timing and performance of Narve 33, as there have been a couple of very interesting updates which have emerged on the internet. Now, in case you missed it, a couple of days ago, we were discussing the fact that AMD, or more accurately, one of AMD's engineers, did an oopsie. And through their LinkedIn account, they basically confirmed that Narve 33 would be indeed monolithic, produced on TSMC's 6NM process, and also simultaneously confirmed that 31 and 32 would be based on chiplets, and of course, based on the 6NM and 5NM process, respectively. So... Since then, Grayman55 has actually said that he believes that Narve 3 will start with uh, Narve 33, and this will be slightly outperforming the 6900 XT. Now, yeah, there will be a refresh, of course, of RDNA 2, which is going to be later this year. It's going to be about the midpoint of this year, possibly a little bit earlier. And basically what we have with this refresh is essentially higher clock frequencies across the board. The architecture is identical, and it's still produced on the TSMC 7NM process, unfortunately. But what's quite curious here is that according to Grayman, Narve 33 will be faster than the 6900 XT. Now, that's pretty much what I've said multiple times in my videos as well. I heard it was up to 20% faster, possibly a little more. In fact, I was given two figures. One was 20% and one was 50. I believe that the 50% was ray tracing performance and raster performance was the 20%. But honestly, I've been getting quite mi mixed messages there. So it will be curious to see A, what the performance and B, what the prices are of this SKU. Now, when it comes to the higher end products, they will still launch, I'm being told anyway, late this year, so Q4. So what the lead time is of Narve 33 to 31 will be rather interesting. I also suspect that this could play into NVIDIA's favor. Now, if I were NVIDIA, and obviously I'm not, and it would depend upon a plethora of other factors, not least of which availability of parts, manufacturing times, and you know, a billion other things. But if I were NVIDIA, I would push out the highest end SKUs, which, to be honest with you, NVIDIA tends to do traditionally anyway, and then basically go ka and make as much money as possible. I do think AMD for Narve 31 will probably have the raster performance crown, but I do believe that NVIDIA will probably do fairly well in hardware-based ray tracing. From what I'm hearing, it's probably going to be kind of a wash um, because the highest end SKU of AMD is going to just be faster because, well, it, it just will be. Um, obviously, it has essentially more performance. Uh, we're hearing it's going to be about three times faster than the 6900 XT or current high end, and NVIDIA's parts are going to be about 2.4 times faster than their current end. So, yeah, just right off the bat you can see amd would have the advantage but apparently nvidia will still have a slight edge when it comes to ray tracing so it's probably going to equal out to be about the same i'm still hearing personally that there's going to be a massive shift in messaging from both companies when these gpus launch and given the fact that amd to my knowledge anyway are going to be more expensive I will be really interested to see the marketing. Oh, and while we're on the subject of NVIDIA, just a really quick thing. And this concerns the size of upcoming products. So on Chip Hell, there is actually a rumor that the next generation data center GPU, Hopper, could actually be 140 billion transistors, which, well, that's quite a number. Now, rather interestingly, um, I actually got told the figure just a few days ago. I haven't actually had time to cover it because I've been trying to verify some information, but I might as well say it in this video anyway because, well, this figure's out. I actually got told 150 billion. Um, so I find it quite interesting that there's a figure difference. It, to be honest with you, one of them could be a typo or just whatever. So yeah, I was told 150 billion, but let's say 140 for the sake of this discussion. That is an awful lot of transistors to throw in silicon and apparently it's still going to be a monolithic die 
Also, as a bit of a bonus, and I'm still trying to verify this with other folks, but you can take this as a, huh, that's quite interesting, um, GL102, I'm being told, has over 90 billion transistors. I'm just throwing that in this video because we're already talking about transistor density and size. And yeah, I mean, that's kind of ridiculous, really, when you think about it. Um, in the next couple of days, there'll be a video detailing a lot more GPU-related stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, it's kind of a bit chaos at the moment. I'm kind of dealing with a leak over the past few days, hence the fact that uh, audio only for today. It's been, let's say, a challenge, but don't worry, guys, no major issues. Um, but shifting to the last topic for today, and this concerns Intel Arc. And yeah, um, as most of you know at this point, the first generation of Arc will launch this year. And it's going to be early this year, actually, to be more accurate. And it looks pretty impressive. Basically, it will be a monolithic design built on TSMC's 6NM process. And as for performance, well, we've heard many rumors, including from myself, that it's going to be about RTX 3070 to 3070 Ti levels of performance. And lo and behold, we've spoken and already shown multiple benchmarks at this point that does seem to indicate that that is actually roughly what we're looking at. And I personally feel that if Intel can get everything right, it should be a pretty impressive architecture. I think it's really going to be them nailing not only the hardware, but also software distribution and, you know, all of the things that come together to make a GPU. Oh, and just as a bit of bonus, I think I've mentioned this previously, but I was actually told that, uh, yeah, <laughs> ironically enough, it was actually supposed to be the first uh, product well, at least kind of the flagship, which used TSMC's 6NM process, but delays here. And uh, yeah, but either way, there is a very interesting patent which is floating around the internet. And um, this one is actually from on Underfox, so full credit to them. I'll, of course, link their Twitter account in the video description. But this is specifically an MCM uh, patent, and it basically, uh, the patent is position-based rendering apparatus and method for multi-die GPU graphics processing. Honestly, this is a pretty complicated pattern to go through, and, and honestly, the inner workings of the pattern don't really have much bearing on the focus of the video here. Um, basically, this seems to indicate that a future Intel GPU will actually be using chiplets. Now, of course, Intel have been pushing chiplets, well, I suppose if, if I'm going Intel speak, it would be tiles, uh, for quite a while now, and we've seen a lot of details of this with Ponte Vico, which is actually kind of monstrous, and that is built around the data center. So it's not exactly a shock. I don't think anyone's like, oh my goodness, look, they're doing it for, well, gaming GPUs as well. We know that AMD are doing it, NVIDIA are going to be doing it eventually. It just makes sense, although Lovelace doesn't seem to be. It seems to be based upon a monolithic design. And there is a very interesting series of patents here. And you, basically, this, of course, indicates that, well, essentially multiple GPU cores, um, well, I suppose chips more accurately, can be thrown together in up to four tiles being shown on this particular patent. And there's even, in figure 20, a benchmark where you can see... Uh, well, basically, them indicating one type of percent increase you can get versus a single GPU. This is kind of interesting. Uh, obviously, it doesn't really give that much indication of how their specific design is going to scale, because clearly different architectures, as you again can see in these graphs, will deal with things differently. Unfortunately, just like any pattern ever, it doesn't specifically indicate the um, focus of the patent or rather the product that is going to be the beneficiary of the patent so it's not like well you know we're going to release a product in 2023 and that's going to be the architecture which is going to feature this design so what I've personally heard is that it could be battle mage but I've also had conflicting information with someone telling me that it's an architect after that. So far, um, I'm going to say it's probably Battle Mage, simply because 
uh, the source that's given me that information is usually pretty accurate. But furthermore, the fact that Intel are seemingly pushing this for other products, um, both CPUs and, of course, data centers, would indicate that they would want to do this as quickly as possible. Again, you know, I've had multiple folks tell me that the first generation of Arc is basically Intel just trying to get everything right. And, you know, engineers will tell you this, you know, anyone's actually had any product time, you know, design time or writing drivers or whatever. I've been told this by multiple people. Uh, it's like, you can't do everything at once because the wheels are going to fall off somewhere. It's really difficult. There's a reason, just for the sake of argument, that AMD with RDNA, they've kind of had this iterative approach, right? It's like, okay... We want to do, you know, we want to move away from GCN. Okay, now we want to move away, um, at, you know, from higher power consumption. We want to make it more energy efficient and we want to add all of these extra features. Okay, now with RDNA 3, we want to do this. And we've also seen, of course, much the same thing with Intel as well. It's kind of like this iterative approach. And I suspect that we will definitely see very similar from Intel going forward. So my guess is that they kind of wanted just to have an architecture, get things like drivers sorted out, understand. There's, there's also, you know, outside of the design things and drivers, there's also a ton of other things which go into this, such as even the logistics of procuring the components whether they are, you know, the high-end memory chips. And, of course, Intel, it's not that they're not experienced with that, but it's still slightly different in terms of mindset. Furthermore, there's other things like the actual marketing behind it. And believe me, the marketing and the, the decisions around this, it's going to be... It's going to be a lot of experience that Intel needs to kind of learn. And that's not a slight against the company. You know, when... We've even seen this to a degree with AMD. You know, you've seen their marketing evolve, not just because their products have gotten better with Zen, but just because the marketing team's like, okay, we're not behind anymore, and they kind of have to get used to being almost more um, assertive, I suppose, in marketing. I don't know if that makes any sense. So, yeah, it'll be really interesting to see the evolution of that. With that said, thank you very much for checking out this video. If you've enjoyed it, the normal stuff... And uh, take care of yourselves. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.